Hey guys, Gore here. Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going to be taking a look at the Grenadier kit and squad and going through some of the tips and strategies to help you employ the kit to the best of its ability. In the right hands and armed with the information in this guide, you'll be able to pick apart enemy squads and provide your team with some outstanding fire support. If you enjoy the video, leave it a like, subscribe for more future squad content, and leave a comment of which kit you want me to cover next. As always, if you want to catch me live, come check out the live stream where I squad up with viewers and answer questions to help you become a better squad player. If you're looking to pick up a copy of Squad, check out my official game store where your purchase helps support the channel, or check out Games to Grunts where veterans of the US and Canada can get Squad for free. Now let's get into the video. Firstly, something I need to touch on before we get into the kit is that the Grenadier is a fire support kit. Squads are limited to three fire support kits in total, so if your squad leader needs a lat and there are two other players using fire support kits, like the Automatic Rifleman and Marksman, then only one of you three will be able to switch to the lat kit. Rounds of squad are ever-changing, so be aware that you may need to switch kits if the situation calls for it. Alright, now let's dive into this guide. The Grenadier kit is essentially the same for every faction save a few instances. The main difference from one Grenadier to the next is the optic the kit comes with, depending on the faction. Some get a magnified optic, others get a holographic sight, and some only have iron sights. The kits without magnified optics will have a set of binoculars included. Looking at the Grenadier's loadout, they get 7 mags for their primary weapon, 10 high explosive dual purpose or fragmentation rounds, and 6 smokes divvied out to 2 white, 2 red, and 2 blue. Before we can get to the noob tubing, let's take a look at all the faction's kits and get the aiming and zeroing down. All grenade launchers can be zeroed via holding your X key or whatever your begin zeroing is bound to, and then using your scroll wheel to either increase or decrease the zero. This is when things start to become a bit different between the factions, so I'm going to go through them individually. For the US Grenadier kit, the default zero is 100 meters with 50 meter increments up to 250 meters. The US kit is by far my favorite because of this next tip. On the US Grenadier site, when zeroed at 100 meters, you have three notches above your 100 meter mark. Each notch up is 25 meters less, so you essentially have extra sights that allow you to shoot accurately at 25, 50, and 75 meters when zeroed at 100. Next, we have the Russians, a regular militia, and insurgents who all use the GP-25 grenade launcher. This launcher's default zero is 50 meters with a 50 meter increment to 100 meters, followed by 100 meter increments to 500 meters. The GP-25 also has a special zeroing option called high, where you use your grenade launcher like a mortar. You have a 200 and a 300 meter zeroing option for this mode, and both have about a 15 second flight time on rounds fired. This option can be incredibly useful when trying to hit enemies that are behind a piece of cover. For the British faction, your grenade launcher is zeroed at 50 meters by default and can be zeroed up to 350 meters in 50 meter increments. The MEA is the exact same with their launcher zeroed at 50 meters by default and being able to be zeroed up to 350 meters in 50 meter increments. Lastly, we have the Canadian's Grenadier, which is zeroed at 100 meters by default with 50 meter increments up to 250 meters. In testing for this video, I discovered that the grenade launcher is not zeroed correctly. At 100 meters, the grenades fall about 15 to 20 meters short, and that number increases the further out you zero and fire. At 200 meters, the rounds were falling about 40 meters short of their target. I've passed this information onto the devs, and hopefully we see it fixed in the near future. Some miscellaneous info before we get into the strategy portion of this video. Much like rockets, the grenade launchers and squad have a minimum arming distance before the projectile will become active. They need to travel approximately 12 meters to become an active explosive. If you shoot at something closer than that, you'll be hearing a pretty embarrassing sound as your grenade hits harmlessly into whatever you were aiming at. The Grenadier is one of the most expensive kits to fully rearm, coming in at 184 ammo. Keep this in mind when ammo is in short supply. Grabbing 10 AT grenades off the Rifleman's ammo bag while medics need bandages and AT needs another rocket probably isn't a good call. Your explosive and smoke grenades are extremely effective but are not high up in the pecking order when ammo is tight. Lastly, your explosive grenades have a 3 meter lethal range, so if you're unsure of the distance to a target, get an SL mark on it so you can dial your rounds in quickly. With the how-to portion out of the way, let's move on to some tips and strategies for when using the Grenadier kit. To start, I'm going to talk about some of the things to avoid as a Grenadier. The mistake I see most often by players is spamming your explosive rounds. People will see a lone target and proceed to send 5 HE rounds of the enemy, either getting their distance wrong or shooting extra rounds to ensure the enemy is down. If you can't judge distances on the fly, don't be afraid to get a distance marker from your squad leader so you can eliminate the target in a single shot. Additionally, don't put all your eggs in one basket. Unless you're hitting the inside of a hab or a building crowded with enemies, it makes no sense to dump all your rounds into one area. 
send a couple, and then wait for new enemies to re-emerge or move to a better position. Moving in to the do's while using the Grenadier Kit. The first I have for you is to use audio to your advantage. If you've ever tried to locate an enemy grenadier, it can be challenging as the sound of the grenade launcher is not as pronounced and loud as normal weapon fire. This puts you at an enormous advantage when flanking or in the beginning of an engagement because you have a weapon in your arsenal that can eliminate targets while keeping your location relatively unknown. Like I've said in previous guides though, don't fire from the same position for a prolonged period of time. The quieter audio can be an advantage, but if you never move, your enemies will not take long to find and eliminate you. Your obvious advantage as a Grenadier is the ability to inflict splash damage to enemy players accurately and over large distances. There are situations where you can make slight tweaks to employ your kit to the best of its ability. Getting a grenade to land within 3 meters of an enemy can be challenging, and when they're running over open ground it can be difficult to score a close enough hit to down the enemy. Look for cover around the enemy or cover that they may be approaching. If they're standing next to a wall, you can use it almost like a backboard. Instead of trying to land the grenade at their feet, you can take the easier route and hit the wall behind them. The same goes for natural pieces of cover like a rock or a tree. In squad, it typically takes 2-3 to three shots to down an enemy if you're not aiming for their head. In the amount of time it takes to peek for long enough to get those few shots off, you yourself are most likely to catch a round or two and possibly be killed if your enemy is aware of your position. Like we mentioned earlier, the 40mm grenades in squad have a lethal range of 3 meters. This means that when quickly peeking and firing a GL, if you're relatively accurate, you can down enemies without them ever having a chance to return fire. This method of peeking and firing a GL can afford you the ability to take on multiple enemies with confidence as you can fire and take cover repeatedly with minimum exposure to enemy fire. When you have no stamina in squad, it can be a pain to try to get rounds on target without the ability to steady your aim, especially at longer distances. Something I've found incredibly effective is that when I have no stamina and no medic in sight is to use my grenade launcher for longer range engagements. Since you Thanks. don't have to be exact with your shots, you can continue to engage the enemy effectively until you can cross paths with a medic for some heals. As a grenadier, you have the most smokes of any infantry kit with 6 in total. You also have the distinct advantage of having your smokes provide immediate concealment on impact. Hand thrown smokes require time to billow and can only be thrown approximately 50 meters. When using the GL smokes, treat them like you would any other smoke grenade in that you want to smoke out the enemy's position, not your own. Grenadiers have the innate ability to put smokes in the enemy's face from hundreds of meters out, so don't sell your possibility short by unloading all six of your smokes 20 meters in front of yourself. Force the enemy to change positions no matter where they are, so that you and your team can eliminate them or allow a window of time to maneuver to a better position. Wrapping up this guide, I have a couple closing thoughts I'd like to share. If you couldn't tell by some of the things we talked about earlier in this guide, judging distances correctly can make or break your success with the Grenadier Kit. Being able to accurately gauge distance on the fly is one of the more difficult skills in squad. What can help you is that if you are the SL or the SL is giving you a distance to something, try to guess the distance before the mark is put down. This will slowly acclimate you to what targets look like at all sorts of distances. Anyways, that's all I've got for you today. I hope you enjoyed this kit specific guide on the Grenadier class. If you made it this far in the video, give it a like, subscribe if you aren't already, and leave me a comment down below your thoughts on the guide and what kit you want to see covered next. Until next time, I'm out.